Welcome to UAS Free Training Chapter 1. As you can see on this screen where I'm talking right now is that you will have me, you will have UAS Free, you will have a practical part, you will learn how to work with UAS Free uh, and use it with SDT340, SDT270 and Loop Expert. We will not be focusing on a device too much, that will be a separate video tutorial. But for the moment, let's be completely confident in working with US3 using all its features and getting the most benefit out of it. So what we will be going through is uh, scene as you see right now. Then there will be another scene where, where we'll be working with US3 together. So you should open your UAS free, install it before that, and then we will go through a step-by-step -step together. Of course, we will play a little bit also with the devices, and that's going to be a fun part because we will show you how to connect UAS free abilities and uh, how, do you, how you work with device and get the data back. And of course, uh, we will need to go a little bit through UAS free manual. Uh, just to help you to connect that manual and this video tutorial to get more details if necessary. So, in order to start properly, of course, you should have your UAS free installed. To do that, of course, you have to purchase it first. And after that, you need to be sure that your system meets the requirements, which are clearly explained in the beginning of the manual. Be careful to have a 60-bit compete computer. A bit computer because that that's what 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 is a very important requirement to to install UAS free. After that, there is an uh, there is a address on uh, in the manual that you can use to download. Uh, alternatively, you can download it from our website on, on the download section. You should download UAS free base setup. Once you do it, you have to extract it, extract it somewhere where you know you did it, of course. And once you do all that. Click on exe file and start your installation. Uh, it's recommendation to choose the first one if you want to install it on your local computer. In any other cases, just ask just just ask your your FLM and, or your your vendor who will help you how to install for the multiple users. Once you've done that, uh, you should start with accepting the agreement, the legendary agreements that nobody ever reads. So who the hell knows what we put inside, but it's very nice. Just press agree and, uh, and, and you'll be able to continue. So once you do that, the installation will start. And if necessary, uh, if you don't already have it on your computer, crystal reports will be installed. And after that, immediately after that, PostgreSQL database will be installed. So simply follow the steps of installation and uh, which are clearly described and you will have no problem installing it at all. Once you finish all that, the uh, ultrasound analysis free setup wizard will, will pop up. You just need to say that you want to install it and the job will be done after you click all the next that will be on your screen. Once you do that, you have to activate and register your, your UAS free. Uh, you have received an email with a serial number and uh, in instructions for installation. So please just click on, uh, on, on, on the links and follow the instructions. What you need to do is to choose the language, enter the serial number into registration window, uh, generate hardware PC code. You will need to input it in the registration page. And once you do all that, you will receive the license. That license needs to be inserted in the bottom window when it says license. And once you do it, just click and you will see this beautiful message that says that your ultrasound analysis uh, software uh, license is valid. From that point on, you're in and you should be able to work immediately. There is also, only, also one more thing, I will be mentioning it several times later, of course is that in case that the update is available, so that means that in case your, your, your software is not up to date or we released a new update or upgrade, you will get the message like this on the right hand bottom of your screen saying uh, a, a new UAS update is available. By clicking here, you will start the update. Of course, uh, you will be asked about permission, but that's the way to get an update. 
So once you make sure that your software is properly installed and up to date, we should start working. So we will start with the first thing, just theoretically and go through, through the manual. Later on, I will show you how to do it in the, in the software uh, to, to enter the data, is the database definition. So basically, your US3 will be managing your database. Your database will be divided in several folders. When I say several, it can be endless number. You, you can have as, as many folders as, as you want. Within that folders, you will have a certain tree structures. So think of it like this. You can have entire database if you are managing several plants. Each plant can be placed in one folder. In each folder, you can have numerous tree structures. Again, numbers is not limited. And those tree structures will represent certain certain units or certain areas you want to cover in one, one database. That can be certain process, certain plant, certain building within your plant. However you, want, you, you decide you want to separate your data. Uh, just a nice advice is not to make huge tree structures. So if you are managing the factory with uh, 15, 20,000 measurement points, it's not, it's not advised to put it all in one tree structure. Uh, not because software will not handle it, but because you will not be able to, to manage that tree structure properly. So just, just separate it in some nice, nice logical areas that, that, that you will represent by each tree structure. Uh, so the tree structure then is divided into measurement, into nodes. So just like any tree, uh, the top name here, as you can see in this example, is called example plant call it a root, database root. So just like in a tree, you have a root where, where, where all starts from. And then you will have all these branches. These branches will be nodes. And uh, we will call them a, a tree node. And it will all end up with a measurement which you can visualize to yourself like a leaf. So from the, from the database root, you will be able to use six nodes six levels and the seventh one needs to be the measurement setting so imagine it like this so you will have just like in this example you have a heavy recirculation unit then it will be the pump groups several groups probably pump group a in that pump group a we will have a pump one electrical motor non-drive end bearing and then in that non-drive end bearing we will build a measurement settings the measurement settings are built simply because not all points need the same measurement settings. Uh, you are able to define, predefine all these measurement settings and it's of course mandatory. You can add as many sensors as you want. You can add any, as, as, as many, uh, uh, as different settings as you want. What you cannot do is to add two identical sensors in one node. Uh, of course, it's, uh, it's, quite, it's quite logical because if you want to measure something with one sensor, that one sensor will be recognized under the settings you set up at that, at that level. The structure of good database before we start working together um, doesn't need to be something that, that should scare you. It's quite, it's quite logical. It's, uh, it's like having, uh, I always like to use this, this example that Tom Murphy always put, if you have 10,000 the CDs or DVDs with music or movies. You need some logic inside to be able to find it. So what you are doing there is, is, is to address all this point so you can find them later easily. The most simple and most ineffective way to build, to build a database is to say uh, position 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to 10,000. So that, that's great, you'll be done in 5 minutes, but it's completely useless because you don't have any guides, you don't have anything which will tell you what is what, how to search for that database, how to actually use it. Uh, depending on your age, there are many people who are saying that they are slaves or of their computers. It's not meant to be that way. The computers are meant to help us. So the computer is my slave. The only problem is how you define things in that computer. Computers are very stupid, they understand zero and one. So if you set up everything properly, the computer will be your slave and make your life easier. So, of course, when you start building, just, just, just imagine that you want to find, that you want to, want, want to deliver a letter. So, as you can see in this example here, you need to have a country, state, province or region, town, 
district name, street number, and then house or apartment number. So you can see by following this information, you will always be able to find the right spot. In our case, you will be able to find the right measurement points that, that, you, that you need and you want to use. So as I said, uh, US, free, US, US Free will manage uh, six levels where the seventh level needs to be needs to be measurement setting so you can call them nodes and then the last one will be the measurement point that's that's actually the point that you don't go any further this is the point you measure usually when we speak about rotating equipment that will be a bearing so you will have a pump that pump has a motor that motor has a non-drive end bearing so the measurement point will be non-drive end bearing and we'll be setting our measurements at that point so next thing before we start working is choose reliable naming. That's critically important. And we have seen so many people making mistakes and making their lives very difficult because of bad definition of names. Nomenclature is critically important. Of course, pump, pump uh, uh, space one and pump one is not the same thing. Uh, any way you change the letters, you change, you change the spacing, it will be different. But what you want to do with that name is to give some nice information that everybody will understand. So maybe the people, maybe the people from, from lubrication department will crystal clear understand if I give the name that bearing on the right side. But if anybody else comes from a different department, he will be completely confused. So we need to put a proper names that everybody will understood. Those needs to be named names that you normally use. There is no convention that is forcing you to say that, 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 that this bearing needs to be called non-drive end. No, you can call it outboard bearing, you can call it number one, you can call it outside, you can call it right, left, whatever you want, as long as that is the name you are using regularly and all your colleagues will perfectly well understand uh, what do you mean. Uh, to be precise, you need to understand it for sure, and don't forget that the person who will be taking the measurements needs to perfectly understand what do you want from him. Where is that measurement point? If it's number one, okay, if we use number one for non-drive end, that's great. That, that's going to be crystal clear to everyone. Also, don't forget to put some interesting information in there. Because uh, uh, very often we have a situation that people say, okay, now we have this brand new software, we have this solution, let's work with it, let's go step by step. So step one is to make a database. Yes, you can, uh, you can try to think that way, but it's not really the best way. Because uh, normally, as humans work, you will say, so step one is make database. Okay, let's assign a person who will make a database that person will enter all our 10,000 measurement points that we need and from that point we will start working and we will go to step two. Not a very good idea because any mistakes made in that step one will need to be repaired. So you can just imagine if you start building a database of 10,000 points, even 1,000 points, it doesn't matter, if you make a systematic mistake that the order is wrong, the naming is wrong, uh, the, 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 the logic of the tree structure is not really reflecting the reality, uh, not everyone understands the names, that means you will need to go back and to repair everything. So our advice, after a really lot of experience of, of building this, is make few machines. Just, just put several assets inside. Take two or three pumps, two or three fans, uh, set them properly. Uh, Nobody is asking you to do it perfect the first time. But don't go back and change 1000 points because you made some small mistake. It will take you a huge time and you will get very frustrated. So put several assets inside, uh, work with it one or two days, see all the mistakes, ask everyone, your colleagues, everyone else, uh, just ask them a simple question. Is this okay for you? Is this okay for you? Are we all guys uh, on board with this? Do we all understand that this is bearing number one, this is bearing number two? Or want me to change to non-drive end and drive end? Whatever. Which, is, which well is which? 
So when that is all clear and everybody agrees, and uh, be a clever guy, take all the input you, you, you can get, because then it's going to be a perfect database. Uh, from that moment on, then you can do a lot of copy-paste. A copy-paste means being very fast, because if everything is done perfectly and properly on, on, on one pump, if you copy-paste that structure to the to, to, to next pump, it will work perfectly. But don't put yourself in a position to go back and change everything from the beginning because it's a terribly frustrating job. Also, when you, when you, when you put all these all this, uh, 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 names in the tree structure, why not putting some additional interesting information? Because searching the database means searching by certain parameters. So if I have a database of 10,000 movies and I want to see all the comedies from 1987, uh, if that information is not attached to the movies, I will not be able to find them because those parameters don't exist. So if you want to have very easy, nice and elegant searching of your database, and the point is at the end of the day to be fast and relaxed, then you should maybe put some interesting, interesting letters and interesting names. Uh, what is a bearing? What is the pump volume? If you want to measure cavitation, so you will send somebody just to do that. Uh, is it greased or is it lubricated with oil? Is it in the greasing program at all? Uh, all these interesting names and interesting, interesting uh, uh, suffixes will be incredibly useful when you want to search a database. So don't try to regroup your assets in a survey logic. This is something we will now play together. Uh, if you try to build your database in the way it's done in the field, it's not necessarily the greatest idea. Because the person who is working next, next to, uh, in front of the screen and, and analyzing the data will use one logic. Of course, the guy who is collecting the data in the field and making an inspection is incredibly important, but we have a special treatment for him. We have a special feature in, in the software where we can arrange these work orders to be perfectly suited for him. So you don't need to make compromises. You can make it perfect for you, who is working at the screen of your computer, and also make it perfect for, for him. Let me put it this way. If you want to analyze what's going on with the recirculation pumps in a certain group, you also want to see both uh, a main leading pump and a backup pump. And you want to compare. And maybe you want to make a decision to switch to backup pump. You want to change your decision and say that we should not be starting this pump only, only, only after two months just for test. Let's change it a little bit. For that decision, you need to have these assets grouped in a logical way in the way they work in the field. But we also know that when, 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 a, when a person goes to collect the data, that these two pumps will be never working at the same time. So they should not be in the same work order. So uh, instead of, of, of building your tree structure in a way that will be hard to work for you, don't do that. Just, just do it in a logical way, the way you want to see the data. How the data will be collected, that's one of the chapters in this training, we can make it perfectly suited for the technician who's, who's going to go in the field. So we can take all this from, the, from your database and say, this is what I want you to do today in this order. And that order will be perfectly optimized for the person in the field. So to start with, build your database in a way you want to manage your assets. In a way you want to understand your assets, compare them, uh, make a decision based on multiple data. So that should be the first thing you will be following and that's, that, that should be the logic you need to use to, to, to follow it. Now let's, let's move to a little bit more practical part. So how do, we, how do we come to this point? As you can see, this is really nice. I have a lot of nodes, I have, a, I have several assets here, I have some measurement, then I have a lot of squiggly lines, lines and that looks Quite interesting. If you have a complete amateur looking at this, that would make me look quite clever. But that's not necessarily the case. It's it's quite simple. But we need to come to this point in a in a certain way. So once you open your your UAS free, 
you will click here on the files tree structure and now you are in your database now you are in the menu that explains you what do you have how is it organized uh, what is in which folder here you can open new folders open new tree structure put them in different places so our, our, our playing and our game will start exactly here as you can see here uh, it depending on which instrument you work with because this same software will will support your 340 270 and loop expert and I don't know who is watching this manual so let's cover all three it will be useful for you certainly uh, you have as you can see in my case I have a lot of data folders here when you start working with your, your, your UAS3 you will only have if I'm not mistaken you will only have this my data folder and a lot of things inside uh, in my case in your case it will be empty so great let's start building the first folder so I will say create a new folder and if you own 340 let's start with this you will click here so you will not click here because this kind this type of folder is used for 270 and loop expert but if you own 340 you will click here and you are creating the folder which will be used with 340 so let's call that uh, that folder my manual why not so I'll call it my manual and inside uh, the tree structure name I will call it my training why not so it's gonna be my manual and training and this is how you will start just press save and it will initialize the folder as you see on the screen it will initialize the folder it will open that new tree structure and that's how we will start playing and working inside just give him a second okay here we are so right now you can see the data folder open right now is my manual and here in brackets it says sdt 340 so when you have many many folders inside and in case you are working with many different instruments you will know exactly which which folder is for you if you are working with 340 and inside I have only one tree structure and it's called training because I created only one but let's say I want to edit edit this folder so the first button says edit so right now it's called my manual let's change the name to your manual so I will change the name to your manual and I will save it so here with this when the, when the when the folder is selected you can edit the name of the folder of course by pressing here this is what we already did I can create a new folder or I can see the info about this folder so display name and, and all the numbers that comes with it did or I can select this folder and I can delete it I will not do it right now because we need one to play but at the end of the training we will learn also this one is very simple operation you just delete it and it's gone so to move forward I will select this tree structure in the future normally you will have 10 15 20 30 tree structures it doesn't matter you select one of them and you click open now this tree structure will be open as, as a, if you remember I said tree structure is the group of data it's gonna be a group of your assets uh, building number one or process number one or doesn't really matter how, how you want to look at it uh, make it a certain reasonable size so don't put 20,000 uh, uh, measurement point inside because you will be lost quite soon but also think about that if you want to compare certain things it's quite practical to have them in, in, in one tree structure so normally is logical to have one uh, a logical process or one logical geographical unit as building number seven or whatever to have it in one in one uh, one tree structure because the work order will be generated what needs to be done what need to be data what need to be collected will be generated from this one tree structure you cannot combine it from two different so again uh, the building the database needs to follow your logical daily work and that's what we always encourage you to do. 
just to practice a little bit more around this, I will click again on my file, tree structure, and here I will say create new. Okay, I created my building number one. I, now I want to create my building number two, which will be my, my next tree structure. Of course, I still don't have anything in it, but let's just do it for the practice. So I will call it building two, and I will save it. And as you can see, I will have them here all in my folder, all the different tree structure that belong to this folder. Of course, I can select it and I can edit and I can say that actually it's building number 2A and I can change the name. Of course, if you want, you can select this one and completely delete it, but always you will always be asked several times and be sure you don't delete some kind of important data. Uh, so be sure that the data is not important or the tree structure is empty and then you can delete it. So let's go back to our, to our training, training tree structure. So uh, I will now move here just to connect this video manual with the manual you have in your hands and you can, and you can read. So we finished this part and it's quite clear. Uh, I hope you are practicing together with me. You are, you are following what I'm doing on my, on my screen. And right now I want to open another folder for 270 uh, because maybe some of you are working with 270 or Lubexpert. So I will open file tree structure. So this is my again tree structure list and I want to create a new folder. And this new folder will be for, for SDT 270 and Lubexpert. So I will call it, let's say, let's give it a nice name. 270 or L, uh, LBX manual. The tree structure will be again your, your manual and we will change it later if we want. So just be sure that you clicked that you clicked what needs to be clicked. okay this is what I, this is what I want. Save it. So now he will be initializing folder and I will have another folder because we will use it as well to show how to work with these two instruments. Now you have another folder which will contain the tree structure. You will see the difference with the tree structure icon because this one, the first one for the, for the 340 is blue while the, the, the another one for 270 is orange. So you can immediately, immediately see what's for what. So let's move on. Let's go back to, to our, our, our uh, 340 tree structure or, let's, or, we can stay, or we can stay in, uh, in 270 tree structure and start playing from there. So here you will now have completely explained how to start building uh, the tree structure and where is the beginning. So as we said, we are here and before we start building any tree structure, I want to show you how to generate the demo data. Demo data is the, tree, the demonstration tree structure that will give you an opportunity to learn, to look and to see certain signals. It's very useful at the beginning where you want to get familiar with the tools. So click on file. If you are in a 270 and Lubexpert folder, click on file and click generate demo data. Uh, US3 will ask you if you want to insert the demo data, just click yes and the job will be done. It will tell me now that it's inserted successfully. What you see here is now that everything is in, in red font. I will explain you later what does it mean. But I just want to show you how to, how to uh, uh, restore it on your computer. So here you will have uh, many different signals as an example, nuisance corona, destructive corona, steam traps inspections, uh, different cases. It's quite useful and it will be very helpful for you in the beginning. Don't, don't, don't think about the red font. This will be explained later why and what. Also, you want to do another thing. I will show you to you practically. You want to restore the demo tree, demo tree for 340. 
uh, you will get this from your vendor or your, your, your tutor or your uh, support. So what you want to click here to restore, of course you will make a full US database backup on a regular basis. Click yes and now where do you want to restore it from? So I will click browse, it will open my desktop in my case and I will look for my backups US free. So I put them all in one place so I can play easily and here it is, demo 3 free 40 backup. Double click uh, and select this one and restore it. It will restore, uh, it will override the existing folder with the same name. You obviously don't have the, uh, the data folder with the same name, so don't worry about that. And let's just give him a minute. Okay, it's here. So let's see where it is. So I will click again, file, tree structure. It will open my tree structure. And now let's look where it is. So 340, centrifuge, Simsa, I have different here. Uh, demo folder, data. It's not easy in my case because it can be anywhere. I have a lot of them. So here is the one we created together and we will play a little bit, a little bit later with it. So we are looking for a demo tree 340. So you'll browse for your all of your all of your uh, folders and here it is. So I will open it and it gives me a lot of different information about uh, measurements of leaks, mechanical lubrication, steam traps, all eight pillars of ultrasound. It's very nice for the beginning, use it. It's excellent for practice. It's excellent for some reference file. So for instance, here you have a certain problem. It looks like this in time waveform. It looks like this in spectrum. Here is a trend. It's very good for practicing. So we will use exactly this point to play a little bit before we start building a tree structure. You, get, you, you need to get familiar with the workspace. So how, how, does it, how does the 340 workspace look like? So let's, let's start from the top. Uh, first in the toolbar is file where you can uh, go through tree structure and then you will browse for all your tree structure that we already did together. If you were a user of UAS Lite before, you can now import UAS Lite data using this command. So that means if you were working for a certain time with your 340 and US Lite, and now you upgrade it to UAS3, you don't lose all your data, you will just import it into UAS3, the new folder will be created, and then you can continue using your data for UAS3. The next one is view. So here you have a top pen, bottom pen, and navigation picture pen. Let's open all, all three of them. So uh, this is your tree structure. That's view. This is your top pen. Here is your matrix, here is your static trend, time waveform and spectrum. Here is your bottom pen with additional command bar with all your measurements that were taken historically. And here is your navigation picture pen where you can import the picture and put the pins to, to browse through the machine uh, uh, following that pins that you put on the right places. So for the moment I will, I, will, I will shut this one down and you can see if I uncheck bottom pen it's gone, it's not going to be shown. Sometimes you want to see it big so why not you can, you can uh, remove it. But there is also another way, you can just minimize it down and it will still be here because it's useful, you will need it in your everyday work. If you show the navigation picture pen it's going to be here. So your workspace is telling you uh, everything what you need to know. So your workspace also means that you can, and this command is for all, all uh, uh, pens, it can be dockable, you can hide it or floating. If I hide it, it's simply gone. It's the same command like here. But I want to show it and then I want to have it floating. So floating means 
okay, it's here because it's on my other screen. The floating means that now it's like a pop-up window. If I want to put it back again, I will hold it with my mouse, move it, and then I will put my mouse here and release it. And now it's here. The same thing I can do with bottom pen, and you can see it's here. It's literally floating. So you can have it as a pop-up window and use it when you need it. Or if you want to put it on a proper place, you can do it here. I can do it also differently. I can make it a floating. Let me, let me bring it here. And then I can say, no, I want to put it down. So now everything will be changed. You can, you can do it any way you want. You can customize it and, and it, will be, it will be done the way you want it. So now I will, I will remove this one. And okay, here we are again. So the next thing, uh, now, now we discussed the view. Now, next thing is tree nodes. This is the commands we will use while building a tree nodes. I will show you both ways of doing the tree nodes. So you can do it here with your right click and you will have all command bar, bar or you can do it from here. Of course, we are all quite accustomed to use it, to use it on a mouse. So normally and usually you'll be doing it that way, but it's important that you know that it can be done from this way. This is about reports, so you can, you can choose uh, reports of tree structures, alarms, work orders, mismeasurement, measurement details, events, and of course lubrication issues. In the chapter about reports we will go quite deep in this and I will explain you all the details. When we come to utilities, you have several several things here to work with first one is node icons so when you click here you have certain icons in this tree structure that they belong to this tree structure they are already here so if you want to add some other icons you can upload your or your own icons following this and then you can choose where you want to upload them from and simply up, uh, upload them there will be displayed here you can choose them and you can attach them attach them here so you can enrich this uh, your small database of the of the of the icons and use them if you, if you if you want to explain each point this way next thing will be alarm functions this will be uh, one of the chapters in in this training we will go into the into the alarms very deeply and in details because this is something you need but for the moment, just to know where is the command to go for alarms. The next one is database. From here, this is all again going to be a separate chapters. You can back up your database, you can restore it, you can export XML file, tree structure and tree structure plus measurement data, or you can do the opposite, import the file that somebody maybe sent you. You can also change the language. You have one, two, three, four, five, seven languages here. You can assign operators. Uh, so that means that the operator is, is the guy who is, who is uh, working with the instrument. So you can add a new operator. You can update his credentials or you can delete the operators. We will touch that part uh, uh, later, of course. And you can export WAV files from each of the measurements. You can click it. So th this is one way to do, there is a faster way to do it once you are in that measurement point. But for a moment, just to get familiar with the workspace. And of course, you can, you can uh, create a login user. So who is using this computer, who is using this, this tree structure. Uh, this will be explained also, also in details. Uh, when we go to options, you have system settings, you have graphic, graph and static trend settings and database settings. Database settings are already done, so simply leave it that way and it, 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 if it works properly. When you click on the system settings, uh, we will right now go into it a little bit deeper. So this is general about, uh, about the tree structure I'm, 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 I'm right now in. So this will be my tree structure icon, this will be my navigation pin icon, uh, which will be shown in the navigation picture. Uh, then I have a sec uh, next tab is talking about domain graph. So time domain, you can choose to always have a fast preview. That signal will be downsampled. 
It's quite useful when you have 256 kilo samples per second focus mode, which is very heavy file, and you just want to browse through the files and just to just to visualize it, not to go deep into analysis. You can choose fast preview. It will downsample it to 32 kilo samples, and it will open very fast. You can just browse browse for all of them, and then in every signal you can choose show me everything. And uh, second one is for uh, spectrum for FFD. You can choose window function, re rectangle, Henning, Hemming, uh, triangle, Blackman, Harris, and flat top. Let's leave it in a rectangle for the moment. Next tab is about units, so you can choose temperature units, Fahrenheit, Celsius, acceleration will be G or millimeter second square each second square. Velocity can be millimeter second or each per sec inch per second. Uh, grease weight, if you are working with lube expert, is green, green, uh, grams and ounces. Frequency, hertz or CPM, and bearing unit millimeters or inch. We will play with this a little bit later when we build a database and we will actually change the units and we will see how it affects. You can choose the printer, paper, paper, uh, paper size letter or A4. Then you can choose all available sensors. <coughs> This is quite useful and I really recommend you to do this. So uh, take a look at what sensors you do have. Because as you can see, we have a lot of sensors uh, as an option free, with 340 in this case. So take a look at what you have and check them. Because every time you need to choose the sensor, the, the, the software will offer you which sensor you want to use. So instead of opening 10 or 12 of them, it will just open two or three of them exactly what you have. So let's say I have uh, my RS2T, I have my uh, accelerometer, and let's say I have an air sense. That's what I have, and that will be used, and that will be offered to me anytime I want to create settings uh, in the measurement point. Or you can switch to loop expert mode. And in this case, because if I'm in a 340 folder, it's only offering me temperature. Normally, it would offer, offer me a loop, loop sense as well if I'm working in a proper proper data folder, which is meant to be for uh, which is meant to be for uh, 270 and and loop expert. So let me check again my my sensors. So yes, it's gonna be RS2T. Let's say I have an air sense. I have my accelerometer, temperature, and RPM. Okay, I'm fine. Uh, about the connection, here you can set up the proxy connection, proxy settings. Tree view, uh, this is simply a design, do it, do it any way you want. Uh, you want it to, uh, just to be like this as it is right now. You want it to be dotted, dashed, solid, uh, so it will have the lines here or dotted lines, however you want. This is, this is just a matter of design. Then you will need to add lubricants. If you are working with 340 only, then you will not need to add lubricants, but we will come to this chapter when we need to, uh, we will need to work with, with LubExpert. So you will create your, your, your lubricants database here, as well as the grease guns database, you will be creating it here. So I can save and close all my settings. Here I am. And the next thing is graphic and static graph and static trend settings this is quite important and it's quite useful so this window will pop up and it's giving you seven, four opportunities general settings static trend settings graphs time domain frequency domain and initial baseline and default settings for exporting image so let's discuss each of them in general settings, I can choose what I want to see. So number of measurements to show. We'll come to that also later. This is just for you, just to get familiar with the, with the commands. I can choose to see all available measurements. I can also choose to see, let's say, most recent free measurements. Why not? I, ca I can choose to see measurements between, in, in a date range from two, or I can choose to see all measurements from certain event. In this demo tree, I do not have any events. Event will be any note that you put inside, like bearing replaced, fan balanced, uh, impeller, uh, impeller replaced in a pump, or whatever else, or maybe alignment was done. So you can say, okay, show me just the data after that event. 
This is quite useful if you want to do proper condition monitoring if you, and if you want to do it easy because behavior of your machine before this intervention was obviously different and now it should be improved or not. And then you want to see, okay, just show me after the moment when we replace the bearing. Because all the previous measurements are talking about an old bearing. They are still there, they are never deleted unless you really want to delete it. But this is only showing you because you don't want to see the graph which is showing you two years of history and in the meantime you, 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 you re replace the bearing. So you can say I want to see it from that point. Uh, it's all customizable so you will be able to choose what you want to see. I will repeat it doesn't delete data, it just hides the data which, which doesn't, meet, uh, doesn't meet your requirements. The next one is static trend. So, uh, here I will define how I want my static thread to look like. Uh, first of all, the, the, the first stop should be to choose for which sensor. So I can say, yeah, I want to set up the, the, the way my graph will look for ultrasound or temperature or RPM or humidity, vibration or anything else. So I can say, okay, let's, let's set up my, my uh, graph for the ultrasound, my static trend graph. So I can say, okay, let's put my desk background white or let's make it a little bit more complex. Let's put it maroon, uh, label and text, let's put it to be a contrast white, uh, event color, why not? Let's put something, something blue and nice, why not? Uh, graph background, something nice and tender like light salmon, by the way, I'm hungry. Uh, salmon sounds nice. Graph foreground, why not? Let's put it also maroon and let's see what we will get. Label font, let's put it Arial, bold, why not? And then you can show, you can, you can, you can choose uh, how to display the data. And this part is very important uh, to visualize the data instantly. So first of all, by checking these boxes, you will decide what you want to see by default. That default can be changed. Every time you look data, you can change it immediately but by default this will be shown and in my case I said okay show me everything show me RMS Max RMS peak and crest factor cool but now they're all gonna be black so it's not, it's not quite useful so let's change uh, let's change uh, RMS to maroon let's put uh, peak in uh, in tomato why not Let's show Max RMS in something dark gray. It's not very interesting for rotating equipment, but why, why not? And let's uh, show the crest factor as, uh, as green. Okay. Uh, green, yellow. Excellent. So now my graphs, my lines of each indicators will be in different colors. So it's gonna be very, very easy to visualize what's going on with your graph. Another thing is also very important, you can set up the max y-axis. You can set up the, the y-axis. If you don't check this, it will automatically adjust y-axis to put your graph in the middle of the screen, so to be optimized, to be, to be put there in a logical way. Sometimes it can be confusing, sometimes it's very, very helpful. So you will need to decide what, what you prefer. Uh, if I put uh, max y, max y axis to, I don't know, uh, 75, it will start from minus 15 to 75. And that will be my, my y axis, that will be scale of y axis. If I leave it like this, if I uncheck it, it will be optimized to the actual values on the, on the graph. Uh, why am I saying confusing? Because sometimes it will, it, it, of course, it will optimize all four indicators, so they will all be somewhere close to each other. And uh, visualizing it first time, you may say, "Oops, my crest factor is the same, the same value as my RMS." It's not because the Y scale is completely different. So it's quite useful after a few measurements when you see how is it going. Just set up your Y scale in the way that will be the most useful for you. We will come back to this point again so you will be able to see it. Okay, let's put just apply settings and save and close. So if I put this, 
this is this is how I designed my graph. It's not very nice, but uh, okay. The gusti was known as this putanto. We don't discuss the taste, but do it any way you want. But now you know how. Let's go back again here and see that we can do the same. Right now we did it for static trend graph, but we can do it also for time domain, for frequency domain, and in case of lubrication, initial and baseline. So do it for yourself for each of these graphs. Do it in a way you like it. You choose the colors you like it. Uh, it's a good decision to make a good contrast. So you can visualize the data the moment you see it. And each of them will be set here. And in the end, you go to export image and choose your, your defaults for exporting the image. Apply settings, save and close. And we did that part of the job. The next thing in this toolbar, what you have is about device. So considering that I am in 340 folder, when I click device, uh, software is offering me 340, of course. Now I have four commands here. I can upload from PC to 340. So I can upload the data and send somebody or go myself to the field and take the data. I can download from 340 to PC, meaning we finish the data collection. Now we're back into the office, let's download the data to PC. You can update the firmware. So if there is a new release of the firmware, because we are doing it constantly, we are improving our solutions constantly, just check the firmware from time to time. There will be some news probably for you. You can update the firmware from here, or you can upload the key in case you are improving, upgrading your instrument. You can also do it from here or remotely. The last command here, it's uh, about the software. Here, here you have your serial number, your user number, hardware code, license number. So in case there is any problem and you need uh, support, here is the information you need and here is the number of version. Uh, and here as well, check for updates. We really recommend, sometimes people forget, we recommend just to check for updates because it's, uh, it's useful. We release updates from time to time and uh, they are free of charge for you. From, so just take them because they are, they are all improvements. Okay, I will not do it right now because I have it already. So as I said, this is your matrix. It's showing you last four measurements. By, when I say it's showing you last four measurements, I mean historically. So for this sensor, RS2T, because as you can see, I clicked on the sensor, matrix is showing you last four measurements for the quick review. Here you have your static trend. So it's showing you, it's showing you the, the trend curve for, for, each of this, uh, for each of these indicators. If I want to remove one of the indicator, I will click here, it's gone. I will click it back, it's shown. If you remember a few minutes ago, we, sh we said default. So yes, by default, something is shown, but I can also remove it and say, I don't want to see it. So in this case, I'll, let's say I'll, I only want to see my, my max RMS, okay? Or I want to see just RMS. So this is your choice in the moment of looking at the data, or you can simply, simply see them all. Here is your time waveform. We will discuss it just a little bit later. Uh, in the bottom pen, you can choose historically. This is my time waveform from uh, 17 June 2020, 1458. This is the next one, two minutes later. You see that different. And here is my spectrum that we will explain just a little bit later, but for the moment, just to get you familiar, just to get you familiar with the workspace. Here in the bottom pen, this small, small uh, tool is telling you how many, how many uh, alarmed positions you have in selected area. So for the moment, I selected only this RS2T, and you can see here, I don't have any alarms activated, but let's say the way I like to do it, I come in the morning to work, I click on my database, and I want to see what's going on. So I see here I have three uh, danger alarms and I have one alert. So let's see this alert first. This command serves a purpose to lead you directly to that point which is under alarm. So if I click here, it will open 
directly this. It says the name is also C. Lubus Fred Lubsens. Whatever, this can be any pump, any fan, any bearing, doesn't matter. I can click here and it will show me the first one. And this is RPM. I can click next one. Temperature is in red alarm. And I can click the other one. And you can see here that uh, some other point is in alarm. So by clicking here, you will be opening one by one point which is in alarm. Once your condition monitoring uh, practice is mature, this is going to be a very useful tool because if everything is okay, if your alarms are set properly, nothing is in alarm and you have a lot of green alarms and you have just a few orange or, or red, you will go here first. You will click show me the alarm positions. I don't need really to look at the green ones right now. I should first focus on the alarm positions. The next uh, tool here, I will just make this a little bit bigger so that I can show you easily, is uh, several, several tools uh, here which will, which will affect mostly the bottom pan. So first one is selection. Selection means, uh, first one is filter data. You can see when I click filter, I have a small filter here. So right now I can say, let's filter something out. Let's filter all steam traps out. So you see, as, as soon as I'm, I'm typing steam, the software is selecting from your database everything that, have, that has steam inside. And that's quite, quite useful. Now I have all the steam traps here, but I want to go a step further. So I will put this sign dot comma and I will say yes but I, I just I just want to I just want to steam traps who were measured with a sensor RS2 needle 100 so I'll put just number 100 excellent so now it's filtered out all the data points that contain steam and 100 are here so I selected them by the name that I gave them and in this case by the sensor that was used it's quite useful and did now uh, we can go back to the point when I told you that creating good strong clever names for the assets and adding some small some small information is very useful uh, because uh, when you when you start searching it will be extremely useful it will help you a lot then I can choose parameters and parameters are showing what you want to see I want to see, let's say, all available measurements or, or I want to see just, let's say, last measurement, most recent one measurement or again in a date range or from the certain event. I will show you later in, uh, in one already built database with a lot of data. Next, you can choose what columns you want to see. So from my ultrasound or from my vibration on any of them, you can choose to see software ID, sensor name, date, time, manual input, sensor serial number, instrument serial number, file name, sampling rate, length, acquisition time, bits per sample, operator, alarm level, level name, and all these all this four indicators. Of course, if you choose absolutely everything, let me show you just how, how does it look like. It will be very crowded because that's, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of data. So I will click on this one just to just to explain you what does it mean what does it mean selecting what you want to see okay I click on this one and as you can see I have a lot of data here in the bottom pen so everything is here because I clicked I clicked absolutely everything I don't need everything to see every day because as I said in the beginning, I want, I want software to be my slave. I don't want to be it, I, want, I don't want it to be other way around. So I can, I can organize this data, as you can see, by drag and drop here, by, by, by moving them. But let's be honest, do I need to see if this is manual input or not? Not necessarily at this moment. Do I, do I need to see in every, in every point what is my software ID, what is the bits, because it, it's, it's going to be the same every time. Uh, I, don't, I don't need to see that, that data. Serial number of the instrument, in case I want it, I can see it. But at the first glance, maybe it's, it's, it's quite, quite intelligent to remove software ID. Sensor name is a good thing to have. 
sensor serial number it will be there you can always see it instrument serial number file name i can move that all uh, bits per sample to see operator who actually did the job is a, is, a, is, a, is a very interesting thing and it can be very useful and i can of course see leave leave all the others you see now it's now it's less crowded and it's something that these are the data I, I want to see every day. This is the data I want to see the moment I open, I open the, the, the software. In case you really want to check it, you can click edit and you can see here sensor serial number, calibration of that sensor, instrument calibration of instrument, mixer frequency, you have all that data here. So in case you need it, open it up and you will see it. You don't need to look at it every day. So that's about selection. Let's go to alarms. Uh, this will be discussed very deeply in alarm section. So here you have all commands that you need for the alarms. Uh, I will not go in details right now, but just for you to know. Work orders or surveys. So you can, you can manage your work orders from here as well and saying add to existing, add to new. Let me show you, let me show you why we put it this way. So if I filter if I filter all my data and I say, show me just steam traps. So I have all my stream traps here. Just imagine this on a larger scale when you have 10,000 points and maybe you have two and a half thousand steam traps. And I say, well, I, I, I want to make a campaign and check all my steam traps right now. And I will just use shift this i will select them all so these are all the steam traps i have and i want to create a separate work orders just for steam traps so this is why i'm combining my filter and work orders and i will say just add to new so what i'm doing right now is please create me a work order with the points i just selected so i can call it steam traps inspection Oops. Okay, nice. So, within two steps, I created the work order under certain parameters. Here, if I click, you see, here it is. My steam trap inspection is here with all these points completely separately from the, from the tree structure. It's a selection that I want to send my technician or do it myself in the field and to check it. So I will close it right now. Uh, we will do it later together, step by step, and I will ask you to do it in your software as well. This is still just, uh, just to understand the workspace a little bit, to get familiar. Then we will have another coffee and then we'll go deeper. And of course, there's another one which is called interval. You can set interval. So uh, this command serves the purpose, for instance, if you have defined interval on, on your machines, each of them, uh, let's say six weeks, four weeks, two weeks, two months, it doesn't matter how much, but then you have a certain problems. I'm, 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 I'm trying to connect this with the real life issues. Then you have a certain problems in the pump recirculation water group. And uh, you want those pumps to be checked in the following period more often. So you will say, yeah, normally we check them every six weeks, but guys, we have a certain problems here. Let's, let's put it in two weeks more often and let's see what happens. So what you will do here is that you will, you will let me just check it. So you will use a control button and you will select all this. Now I'm just imagining all these pumps and these are all the things I want to, I want to uh, check more often set interval and i will say okay i want it to be done every 14 days set interval and now the interval is changed on this one uh, we are doing it here because you can do it as a group of course you can do it one by one but sometimes it's quite painful so if you if you recognize the group that needs to be checked more often use this function it will help you a lot so we finish the interval more or less uh, we covered the basics of how to understand uh, how to understand uh, the workspace how to get around the workspace and now it's time for us to work and that will be explained in a chapter two <laughs>